Hey everyone, Brandon here from TruckSafe. There's nothing quite as frustrating as being stuck in traffic for lengthy periods of time. Now multiply that frustration by at least 10 when you're a commercial driver faced with the pressure of timely and safely delivering freight to an expectant customer on the one hand, and then staying within your allotted hours of service on the other. Fortunately, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations offer some regulatory relief to drivers faced with so-called adverse driving conditions, at least on the hours of service front. But what exactly qualifies as an adverse driving condition? That's what we're discussing in this video, so stay tuned. Do us a favor, hit the like and subscribe buttons below if you find this type of content helpful. Okay, so adverse driving conditions, what are they? Well, section 395.2 of the Federal Safety Regulations defines the term to mean snow, ice, sleet, fog, or other adverse weather condition, or unusual road or traffic condition that were not known or cannot reasonably be known to a driver immediately prior to beginning the duty day or immediately before beginning driving after a qualifying rest break or sleeper birth period, or to a motor carrier immediately prior to dispatching the driver. Drivers who encounter such a condition are eligible to extend their 11 hour driving limit or 10 hours if you're a passenger carrying driver and their 14 hour time window or 15 hour time window for passenger carrying drivers by up to two additional hours when they quote, cannot because of those conditions safely complete the run within the maximum driving time or duty time. In those situations, they are eligible to claim the adverse driving conditions exemption to complete that run or to reach a place offering safety for the occupants of the commercial motor vehicle and security for the vehicle and its cargo. By way of example, let's say a driver has accumulated 10 hours of driving time when he encounters stop traffic due to a road closure caused by whiteout blizzard conditions. He runs out of available hours while he's sitting there in the traffic until the whiteout condition clears. Now, normally this would be an 11 hour violation when that driver then starts to operate after sitting in traffic once the traffic jam clears. However, the adverse driving condition exemption allows him to continue operating for up to two more hours, up to 13 hours in this case, to complete the run or to find a safe resting location. Now, here's the important part. This exemption is not a free pass for drivers or carriers to extend duty limits. It's only for those unique and rare situations where drivers encounter unforeseeable traffic conditions that impede their ability to safely complete a run or find a safe resting location in light of their available hours. In our experience, this is where folks tend to get themselves into trouble. Recall that the regulatory definition here of an adverse driving condition specifically states that in order to qualify for relief, the condition must must not have been reasonably known or foreseeable to the driver or the carrier immediately before the trip or dispatch. And so what this means is that the typical delays caused by everyday traffic situations or weather events that were foreseeable, for example, via weather reports prior to dispatch do not qualify for the exemption. If you try and use it in those everyday situations, you face being written up for a log falsification violation, which is worse than the underlying hours of service violation that you would have had otherwise. All right, so that's the adverse driving condition exemption in a nutshell. But I wanted to briefly read through some frequently asked questions that the FMCSA has posted about this exemption on its website. Now, these are in question and answer format. So first up, the question is, if it only takes an hour for a driver to get through the adverse driving conditions, do they still get to use the full two hours of the exception? And the FMCSA responds, no. Drivers are allowed up to an additional two hours. But if it only took an hour for the driver to get through the adverse driving condition, then that is all the additional time that the driver is allowed. All right, next question. May a driver use the adverse driving condition provision even if the driving condition has cleared when the driver arrives at the location where the condition occurred? Now, the agency's response here is yes, but only if the adverse driving condition inhibited a driver's ability to proceed. For example, if a rock slide blocks the road and causes traffic to back up and the rock slide is cleared off the road before the driver gets there, but the driver is inhibited by the traffic backup, the driver may use the adverse driving condition exception. All right, next question. Are drivers required to annotate an adverse driving condition they encountered on their electronic logging device or ELD. Now, according to the agency here, the answer is yes. A driver is required to annotate the use of the adverse driving condition exception on the electronic logging device. If the roadside officer can prove there was no adverse driving condition, the driver will be cited for the applicable 
hours of service violation, 11 hour or 14 hour. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, the question is, are there allowances made in the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations for delays caused by loading or unloading? Now, the agency responds here, no. Although the regulations do make some allowances for unforeseen contingencies, for things like adverse driving conditions, loading and unloading delays are not covered by these sections. All right, that's gonna wrap things up for this video. The adverse driving conditions exemption can be a valuable tool in the right situations, but you really gotta be careful with how you use it, otherwise you face pretty severe consequences. For even more in-depth information about these types of regulatory topics, be sure you check out our innovative online compliance courses for safety managers and for drivers over at trucksafeacademy.com. Also be sure to check out our in-depth compliance related articles on our website, trucksafe.com and follow us on our various social media pages for the latest highway transportation news and analysis. Thanks for watching.